Hi, ancient philosophy students. Um, my name is Gianluca Dimuzio. I am your instructor for this course. Uh, this is the introductory lecture uh, for the course. I'm really excited that we will be working together this semester. Um, I will try to keep these lectures short so that you can focus on reading and uh, enjoying the works of the ancient philosophers um, in our textbook. Uh, these lectures are not really meant as a, as a substitute for reading, but really as a way to point you in the right direction so that you can make sense of the context around the readings um, and of the most important concepts. And then you're ready to grapple with the, uh, with the actual uh, texts. Um, for this introductory lecture, I thought I would just focus on answering some like simple questions um, and that will give us enough to get uh, to get uh, started. So um, here are the questions, and uh, you're here for the lecture. You're not here to see me, so um, I will take off my uh, my camera. The questions are simple: um, what, when, where, how, and why. If we answer these questions, uh, we will have a good sense of the subject matter of the course, um, and you will have the basics down uh, correctly. First, uh, what is our course about? Well, obviously, it's about ancient Greek philosophy. And what is philosophy? Well, that's a complicated question in a way, but I assume that if you registered for this course, you already have some understanding of what philosophy is, and you already are interested in philosophy. Philosophy is somewhat difficult to define precisely, but here's a provisional definition. You could say that philosophy consists in using human reason and rational argumentation to arrive at a better understanding of certain fundamental questions that are relevant and important for the human conditions. Um, so philosophers ask questions like, um, what is the origin of the world? What is the purpose of human life? Um, is there a God? Is there an afterlife? And how should we live our lives? These are the so-called big questions, you could say. And uh, philosophers attempt to answer them not by relying on religion, for example, or faith, or by accepting a certain authority. Rather, philosophers attempt to answer these questions through reason. Uh, and certainly, as we make our way through ancient philosophy, we will see that the ancient Greek philosophers attempted to do just that. They were the earliest Western thinkers who grappled with the big questions and attempted to if you will, um, crack the code of the universe by relying exclusively uh, on reason and rational argumentation and uh, evidence. When were the philosophers of antiquity active? Well, ancient philosophy spans a very long time. And in our course, we'll focus primarily on thinkers uh, who lived um, between the 7th and the 3rd century before Christ. So that is approximately between 2600 and 2300 years ago. However, the history of philosophy, of ancient philosophy, is much longer. And one may say that ancient philosophy really only ended in about the 5th century of the Christian era, um, so about 1500 years ago. But we will focus primarily on these three or four centuries that I have here on this slide, some of the greatest, most important, most influential ancient philosophers uh, lived in these uh, centuries. Geographically speaking, where were the ancient Greek philosophers active? Uh, well, that's obvious. They were active in ancient uh, Greece. Um, and where is Greece? Um, so here I have um, a map um, of part of the world, courtesy of, of Google Maps. Um, you can see where we are uh, in, in North uh, America. You know, I'm assuming that, uh, that all of you are in North America, but uh, some of you may actually be logging in from, uh, from uh, other places in, in the world. Uh, that's the beauty of online learning. 
Um, so, but the state of Indiana is roughly here where I have the, uh, the laser pointer. If you travel east, uh, you will get to the uh, east coast of the United States, and then you will cross the Atlantic Ocean and you will arrive uh, in Europe. Uh, so here you can see uh, continental Europe. Um, Italy, um, which is where I'm from, uh, has a very recognizable shape. And here, a little bit further east, uh, is uh, Greece. Um, so um, this um, sea uh, that is caught sort of between continental Europe and the northern coast of Africa is the Mediterranean Sea, and Greece is in the eastern Mediterranean. Here is a closer view. So here we're much, much closer. Um, you can see the whole region uh, here. Obviously, this shows you how things are today. Um, many things were obviously very different 2,600 years ago, especially from a, the political uh, standpoint. But geographically, you can see that Greece has basically a mainland part that is sort of uh, um, part of the, uh, of the European uh, continent. Uh, then there is this peninsula down here that is shaped a little bit as a hand, uh, and uh, it's called the Peloponnese. And then there are very many islands. Uh, so Greece is partly an archipelago, a collection of, of islands. It is important to notice that in antiquity, the Greeks had colonies and settlements in various parts of the Mediterranean. For example, the, um, the Greeks had colonies in this area uh, that now is part of Turkey. Um, but along the coast, uh, there were many uh, Greek settlements uh, uh, a long time ago in, in antiquity. Um, for example, the earliest philosophers, uh, the ones that we will study first, were based in the city of Miletus, which was roughly here uh, on the coast of what is now uh, Turkey. Uh, this whole area, uh, which is now uh, the country of Turkey, um, used to be called Asia Minor, or smaller Asia uh, in antiquity. Other philosophers uh, were active in the colonies and settlements the Greeks had in southern Italy. Um, for example, an important philosopher that we will study, Pythagoras, had his school in Sicily, uh, this triangular um, island uh, off the coast of uh, southern Italy. Parmenides, a very important uh, philosopher uh, that we will also study, uh, was based in Elia, uh, a Greek colony in southern Italy that was roughly here uh, near um, what is now the city of um, uh, Naples. Um, later, many important philosophers were based or taught in Athens, in the city of Athens, which is still the capital city of Greece and in antiquity was one of the most important centers of culture and political influence um, in, uh, in Greece. Um, um, around the time that um, um, the ancient um, philosophers that we were studying were active, um, keep in mind that Greece was not a state uh, the way it is now. Um, instead, uh, you could say that each major city, so obviously Athens, uh, Sparta, which is another important city that you may have heard about. Um, there was another that was also important, Thebes, uh, and many others. Each major city was almost like a state in its own right, with its own laws, institutions, uh, with, with its own army. Um, one thing that is truly interesting is that the earliest philosophers the ones that we will study first, like I said, were not based on mainland Greece, but lived in the colonies, in the settlements that the Greeks had either in Asia Minor or in Southern Italy. That's an interesting uh, fact. Um, um, maybe this had an impact on the development of philosophy. Uh, think about it, those who lived in the colonies, 
either in Asia Minor or along the coast of Italy or in Sicily, had probably had more contact with traders and travelers from other parts of the Mediterranean and even uh, Asia. And this may have played an important role in creating the conditions for new ideas to circulate and to be discussed and to become part of the general philosophical debate. There's a big question in ancient philosophy scholarship, namely whether philosophy is an invention of the ancient Greeks and didn't exist before, or rather the Greeks created philosophy by incorporating certain ideas and influences from Asia, or from Egypt, and from other cultures. We will not, you know, pay too much attention to this question. We will not be able to answer it in, in the course, but it's one of those big questions that scholars have given a lot of attention to uh, and have not really reached a definite conclusion. But it's probably something you want to keep in the back of your mind as an interesting question uh, throughout the course and form your own view um, of how to answer it. How do we know about the ideas of the philosophers of antiquity? How did these ideas come down to us uh, if these people lived so long ago? Um, well, that's a very interesting uh, question uh, that can be answered um, historically. We, we know how to, how to answer it. Um, uh, first of all, some of the works of the um, ancient uh, philosophers have come down to us through uh, the manuscript uh, tradition. So um, some of the books that uh, the ancient philosophers um, wrote uh, were copied by hand. Uh, and those copies were copied. Um, and then copies of the copies of the copies were made and so forth until those works basically came down uh, all the way uh, to us. Um, the most recent copies that we have are uh, medieval manuscripts. So manuscripts from the Middle Ages, um, so roughly you know, a thousand years ago uh, or so that um, have been preserved in uh, you know, mostly uh, European libraries uh, or um, uh, churches and uh, monasteries. Another source of knowledge of ancient philosophy um, lies in the works of other ancient authors. So suppose that a very early ancient philosopher wrote an important book, um, but that book is lost um, to us. Um, we don't have it. Um, it, it, it was lost. Um, so um, there may be another ancient author, perhaps a bit more recent, who at the time when he was writing still had access to the book that is lost for us. And this more recent ancient philosopher may have quoted or summarized parts of the book that we cannot read. So indirectly, we can learn more about ancient authors whose work is lost from other ancient authors who still have access to the work. Um, Finally, another important source of knowledge for us is archaeological sites. So archaeologists are still excavating in many parts of the Mediterranean, and sometimes they find fragments um, uh, of ancient books. And in some cases, it has been possible to reconstruct the text that was written in those books and to learn more about certain philosophical views that were written in those books. Ancient books actually looked um, very different from today's books. And this picture um, gives you a sense of what an ancient book um, looked like. Instead of being sort of bound books um, in a way that allows you to turn the pages, as in uh, today's books, um, an ancient book was basically a scroll, a long tape of paper, which was normally made with, uh, with the fibers of a plant called papyrus. Um, the, the English word paper comes from uh, papyrus, this plant that had um, you know, um, uh, fibers that could be um, sort of shaped and worked in such a way that they would form um, something similar to, uh, to uh, our paper. 
So this super long strip of paper was basically rolled around uh, two pins that you can see here uh, on, uh, on both sides uh, at the two extremities. And you would basically read through or find a passage by scrolling forward or backwards using the, the pins. Um, this is different, obviously, from today's books, but uh, it's funny. I, I cannot help thinking that, you know, when you, we use our computers, that the principle is kind of similar. You know, we're, we're scrolling up and down, or back and forth um, by using the mouse. Um, so it's kind of funny that there seems to be nothing new under the sun. We're still using the same principle that uh, these ancient scrolls were, were based on. Finally, why? Why learn the ideas and theories of the ancient philosophers? Somebody could say that because they lived such a long time ago, these thinkers have nothing of significance to tell us. They had, one may say, a lot less knowledge than, uh, than we have um, today. Um, so why learn about them? Uh, this is really a very interesting question, and I, I hope that you will work on answering this question for yourselves throughout the course. Um, here I'm sharing just a couple of my ideas, um, not because you know you should necessarily agree with me, but uh, um, but because I kind of feel um, you know pretty strongly about uh, the value of learning about ancient uh, philosophy. Um, first of all, I think that the fact that the philosophers of antiquity may be very different from us is not really a reason not to study them. Um, I think it's a reason to study them because if you think about it, you really learn the most from those who are different. Uh, from you. It'd be very strange for somebody to say, I only want to learn about things and people who are just like me. Um, it, it's hard to make any progress in, in life if you don't open yourself up to um, things and people who are different uh, from you. So ancient philosophy gives us that opportunity to interact with somebody, uh, with thinkers, were very different from us. And I think that has a lot of value. Another thing that's important is that these ancient thinkers grappled uh, with some questions that are still very important for us. They grappled with um, you know, these perennial problems that are central to the human condition. They, they wanted to know what the world was like in itself, they wanted to find out how a human being should live his or her life. These are questions that are extremely important for us as well. And you can certainly learn a lot from how the philosophers of antiquity tackled these questions and, um, and attempted to answer them. And finally, many of the ideas that we take for granted today, um, that are part of um, our stock of uh, concepts and ways of thinking about the world. When you study Greek philosophy, you realize that these ideas were first formulated by these ancient thinkers. So in a way, these people are like um, our intellectual great, 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 great grandfathers. They basically set the field for us to think about ourselves and the world in a certain way. So by understanding their works, we can understand why we think in a certain way. And I think that, that there's a lot of value um, in this. Uh, so I'm super excited um, to, to be starting uh, this course. There, there's an enormous amount of amazing things that can be learned by studying ancient Greek philosophy. Um, I hope this lecture gave you a good sense of how amazing and extraordinary the study of ancient philosophy uh, can be. Um, this was a, just a general introduction to the course. I have a separate lecture um, for uh, the first group of philosophers that we study uh, this week, uh, week one. Um, please check out the other lecture for this week. Um, I really look forward to interacting with you all in our Canvas uh, discussion groups. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Uh,
and thank you uh, very much.